Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another episode. As you can see, I went and got my 64 standard beetle from storage and we have a nice sunny day because the spring has finally sprung and I want to tackle this oil leak that's been plaguing me for a long, long time. If you're new to the channel, you might not be aware that I had this uh, oil leak that I tried to fix before I put it into storage and I actually made it worse. So I think I know why it is the way it is because I did a little research and I thought I had an earlier engine that it is. This is actually um, from 1970, I believe, if the numbers are correct. And I think I have put the wrong seals in for the oil cooler. So we'll see, we'll take the engine out, tear it apart and see what's what. There's also a few other little changes I want to make. I actually got these slightly wider, slightly taller. These are, let me see, these are 1855HR15 and what's on there at the moment are 165s. So I think that they look a little too small in the back, but they look good on the front. So I'm going to try these 185s on the back. You can see there they're slightly taller than the 165 so maybe they look good maybe they don't but i'm going to try them also last autumn i bought these seats for this car because because this is a standard model it has these vinyl seats originally and they're very slippery and when you go around a corner i'm kind of holding on to the roll cage to stop me sliding off the seat or clinging onto the steering wheel which is actually a little bit fragile. Um, so I made these um, seat mounts last week um, just to try out, put in the seat and it's in a very good position for me because I'm quite tall, but the gear lever is a little bit too far away. So maybe I can play with bringing that forward a bit. Um, I also was going to remove this bar that actually bolts into the tunnel there um, because I couldn't put the seat uh, back far enough. These original seats kind of um, interfered with that. But it seems that with these seats, um, I can keep it where it is. So that's quite cool as well. Not sure if I like them yet, but they're kind of necessary because this is such a powerhouse. Right, so what do we need to do to get this engine out? Well, first of all, I'm going to re remove the bumper and luckily the previous owner of this car made this rear panel removable, which makes my life a lot easier. So we're going to get those two things off first. Then the next will be to remove the carbs because you can't pull the engine out with the carbs on. So let's get to it. Okay, so first things sir, so I'm actually going to remove the wheels. Um, because I want to change the tyres and it gives me uh, a bit better access to uh, the bolts at the back. Uh, I'm also going to lift the car in the air, so I've just placed it onto the lift that we have here. Okay, so this lift makes my life so much easier for jobs like this because you can lift the car so high to be able to drop the engine out and I also use this table that uh, you can lift and lower up, I'll show you later. So the next thing I'm going to remove is the bumper and this rear panel. So as you can see under the left hand side of the um, car, under the rear wheel arch, I have my um, oil filter there and it's actually held on through the bolt, hold the rear bumper on. So um, I need to remove that as well.
Okay, with all that gubbins out the way, what's next? Let's have a look. So I think the next thing we're gonna remove is the exhaust. Uh, you can see this is actually called a tuck away because it tucks away underneath the rear inner wheel arch. So we take this big muffler off and then the next thing to remove is the carbs. So the reason for the oil leak, I believe it's the oil cooler which sits inside of here that I'll show you once we get the engine out. And also, for some reason, these rocker covers, both sides are leaking onto these J-tubes and I had put new gaskets, cork gaskets in there. So yeah, there's lots of leaks everywhere. Okay, with the muffler out the way, the next thing I need to do is remove these carbs. So there's two nuts holding each uh, carb on, plus the linkage, and these just pop off. There's a little pin that you pull out, pull out, and then um, which stops it from popping off, and then you just pop these off. Also need to re remove the accelerator cable, which a lot of people forget when they remove the engine, and then they're surprised when it doesn't come out. And then I also need to disconnect the fuel line and pinch it so it doesn't leak everywhere. So I'm just gonna remove that off of the pump there. Okay, so we're really good in there. The carbs are off, the fuel is disconnected, the accelerator cable has been removed, the wiring has been detached. So the only thing left now is the four bolts that hold the engine to the gearbox and then we can lift the whole thing out. Right, if we look underneath the car, this is obviously the gearbox and then we have one bolt there, one bolt there, and then it's the same at the top. There's one there just by the clutch lever and another one that goes through the starter motor which is there into the engine case so you can clearly see here how bad it is leaking this is obviously from the gasket that i mentioned but this actually dripping off the engine it's running down the side of the case there i don't know if you can see and i believe that's coming from the oil cooler
So there we have it, as easy as that, engine out. Um, I remember wrong, I thought that I could get away with leaving these inlets on, but they foul these triangle side pieces. So I managed to just only remove one and kind of shoehorn it out. There's a little dollop of oil inside here, um, but it looked like gear oil. I don't know. It doesn't smell of anything, but um, but that looks quite clean. There's no, the clutch is not oily, which is a good thing. Um, but you can see, or maybe you can't, but you can see down the back there, it's really wet with oil. And there's like oil everywhere. So I think, well, I, I'm pretty sure that it's the oil cooler that's still leaking and maybe the oil is flicked up into the fan and kind of sprayed everything even this deck lid look you can see is dripping with oil so um the next thing to do is to remove the alternator or the belt the alternator and then everything that's needed to remove the um, fan shroud this is actually I converted this to a later style uh, doghouse cooler they call it because it has this extra tinware on the back here and why that is is that normally the oil cooler fits dead in line with the fan shroud and actually fits inside of it and what happens is the when the fan is blowing the cold air or the cool air it's going through the oil cooler before it cools the number three cylinder so older Volkswagen engines are notoriously known for uh, the number three cylinder overheating so because this is now offset we don't have that problem but the problem is is that it has four seals whereas the older style only has two and I have a feeling that I have been putting the wrong seals on there so Let's blow this apart and see. I'm actually really embarrassed how bad this engine now looks. You can see like rust is coming through the paint and this just happened just now where the fuel had leaked from the pipe that I removed and it's just taken the paint off. This, um, this is actually hammerite that I used because so, so I thought it would be hard wearing. And then you can also see like the engine case has now gone a bit white because of um, damp conditions and it's just really looking terrible um, but this only just over a year ago was com is a completely new was completely newly rebuilt and all of this was blasted and painted and now it looks in this sorry state which is a real shame okay people it's a new day and a new me only kidding there's nothing wrong with the old one anyway so we're going to tear this piece of uh, well this tatty looking engine look it even even some of the fuel leaked down on this last night from this and has taken even more paint off but um yeah i'm not, i'm gonna not bother about that now and let's just get this leak sorted With the belt removed and the clamp for the alternator removed, I can now just undo these two screws on there. And I think I have to remove this piece of tinware and then this whole thing should just lift off. Okay, so you can see with this um, piece of tinware removed, this is the oil cooler. This is the offending item, I believe. Um, and you can see that it's offset now from the actual fan shroud. And now this is ready just to lift off Hopefully, I think I've detached everything I needed to. Um, I put this aluminium tape on here just to help with the sealing because there's a couple of holes here that were for the um, cold starting vents that um, open up once the engine gets to a certain temperature. So it's a bit crude. I should do this properly again, but um, for now, I just want to get it on the road. So let's take a look. So here we have, there's two seals under this 
um, bracket and then there's two seals sandwiched between here and the cooler so you don't normally have this on the older style it just sits directly on here um, so if we look at where the oil is coming from it's kind of hard to say to be honest so you can see down the side of the block there it's wet so that's why I was assuming it was leaking from the bottom there and the actual these two look like they're quite dry so maybe they're not the ones that are leaking but the ones on from the block onto the oil cooler bracket because it's all wet down here as well you can see this is all shiny wet um, it's also wet inside there but last time I took this out I changed the main seal but I have a feeling that the oil is running inside of that hole down the back and um, so I hope I don't need to take this well I'm not going to take the flywheel off this time I'm just going to see what seals we have if I've put the wrong ones on here Okay, I just asked my work colleague who is an engine builder and we've just had a good look and it's a little bit of a mystery because it kind of points to the base of the oil cooler bracket um, the reason why it's wet all the way around here that makes sense you know but for it to be wet at the front there then there's a dry patch in the middle and then it's also wet inside there and I could understand if it was on this side because that's where the hole joins to there but I, I don't know With that piece of tinware out of the way, um, you can clearly see how wet it is on this side and on the base of that bracket there. Um, so it really does point to this. So the oil cooler is just attached by, you can see that M8 nut there, and then there's two more on the base there. So I need to remove those three and that whole thing should come off. Maybe it's something with this head or also. That could be. Yeah. I think you have to measure all this. What you have. I'm here with my work buddy, Kai. Say hi, Kai. Hi. <laughs> and we're just inspecting. We've taken the oil cooler off and you can clearly see that this is actually a smaller hole. And this looks like, what, 10 and this is probably 8. And if you look at the seals that I've used, um, they look like the wrong sizes so if we take these off this is actually a smaller hole on the i don't know okay just doing a bit of investigation kindly uh, kai brought me all of these seals in and as you can see they come in many different shapes and sizes and um, the ones I had in there, which were these, if you look, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but the depth of this lip that fits inside there doesn't actually butt up against the bottom there. There's a gap of like maybe one and a half millimeters. So that would explain that under pressure it would seep underneath um, but I went through this whole box and you have these like thicker ones um, but the actual body is thicker but not the lips that fit inside there and they're actually loose they're too small but I found in the kit that I had I believe these are for a type 3 and these fit inside here really nicely they butt up against the bottom there and they also sit proud. Okay, after trying lots of different seals, you can see here I have hundreds of seals, but none of them seem to fit perfectly. I mean, if we take the um, oil cooler bracket, these recesses here, if I grab um, one of these, I think these are the, the right ones. They kind of fit in there quite nice and snugly, um, both sides. And this wasn't leaking at all, this joint. Um, but I think it was this joint that goes to the engine block. Um, but 
as you can see, these fit in here nicely, and this edge here butts up against here. But if we go to the engine, this this like lip doesn't go seat all the way down so you're relying basically on this edge as the seal also if i get the ones that i took off of here if i try them one right way around there's a little bit of slop there if i turn them over they're nice and snug and it's the same with same with both of them see and if I use these black ones, a bit of slop, turn them over, less but still a little bit, maybe. And these ones I got from Peruzzi, they're actually come in a pack of four, so they are for that style of um, oil cooler. And they feel the same either way around. Okay, this seems really wrong to me, but I, I don't actually have any choice really, but to use these um, black seals that I got from Peruzzi. Um, they are for the this type of oil cooler and they fit this bit fine. It's just that, like I mentioned, um, I'm really not sure this is gonna solve anything, but I need to get this car out of the workshop today, so, I'm kind of left with no choice, but I've just put some oil on there, just some engine oil on there, uh, similar to like what you do when you put your oil filter on, you put a bit of oil on the on the rubber seal. So I'm gonna try that on this. Um, yeah, and then put this back together again. <laughs> Okay, then with the oil cooler back on, um, I'm gonna start putting it back together and getting it back in the engine. I really am doubtful that this is actually gonna solve the problem, but like I said, I don't really have much choice at this moment. And yeah, all I can do is give it a go. Um, it's kind of, I feel like I'm redoing what I did a few months ago, and but hopefully it will work, we'll see. With most of the parts back on the engine, I put all the tinware back on here and sealed this up with the tape, probably unnecessary, but that's what I did. Um, I also found a little plug for this hole that goes through from the top of the case to uh, the clutch. So if this does leak again, then hopefully it won't get behind here. Uh, I also cleaned up uh, the gearbox end and we're ready to slide this back in. Look how bad this looks, it's embarrassing, but next time, I think I'm gonna have everything powder coated. Okay, with a wiggle and a jiggle, we got it back in. Um, I hooked these around before I put it in because um, this has a pipe that connects the two inlets together to balance them and I can't fit them past the fuel filter that I've put in there so I just looped that around. Also be mindful of all the cables and everything, um, I've got them out the way in the right position and all I need to do now is put those four bolts back in and then we'll just chuck everything else back on the carbs etc and let's see if it leaks.
One of the bolts to bolt the engine to the gearbox is a little bit tricky to get to. It's actually this one behind here because um, it's quite hard to reach to it to put the nut on and when you try to put the nut on it can push the bolt through to the other side. So what I do is I've got these strong magnets and I just attach one of these magnets to the, to the side near the starter motor to stop it pushing back in and then I have these extra long spanners um, to reach them. Easy peasy. So now the engine is secured in place it's just doing all the little bits and pieces in the reverse order that we took it apart. So obviously attach the fuel lines, put the carbs back on. Also very important to use new gaskets. These have these steel gaskets, like these crushed gaskets that are one use only. I ordered new ones from Peruzzi, item number 2132 if you're going to order some. So there's not actually that much left to do before we can fire this up. Here's another handy use for these strong magnets is this pipe that you need to put in that the accelerator cable goes through. Um, you can thread it by shining a torch down the back here and then you can locate the hole that it goes through the back plate but it then has to go underneath the rubber seal and it keeps springing back. So by putting the strong magnet on there, you can then lift up the rubber. I don't know if you can see that there. You can lift up the rubber seal there and pop the end of it out. I mean, it saves so much time and effort. And then I can thread the accelerator cable through without trying to chase it. Right, so we're almost back together. Carbs are back on, exhaust is back on, all the electrics are electriced up, and accelerator cable, all the fuel hoses are now connected. Uh, the only thing I have left off obviously is the tinware, the rear valance, etc. And um, it's always a good idea to have a lot of bolts left over because that means it saves weight and saves money. Okay, so I think the next thing I'm going to do is change these tyres over. These, as I said, are 185s HR15s and the ones that were on there are 165HR15. So these 185s are slightly wider and as you can see, slightly taller. So they might look cooler or they might not, but I'm gonna swap these over and um, put the car on the floor. We're almost ready to put this on the floor, but before I do, I'm just gonna go over like a checklist in my head just to make sure I haven't forgotten to tighten anything up. The one thing that I have remembered that I haven't tightened up is the accelerator cable, and I need to put the other rod on to connect the second carburetor. Um, I'm gonna start this like it is without any of the rear panel on and everything. Check if, it, check if there's any leaks still. I'm just gonna throw these air um, filters on and then put it on the floor and start it up. Okay, we're ready to go. Um, little linkages linked. Um, I just checked the oil though, and I changed this just before it went into storage, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's too high. And uh, if I smell it, I'm not sure if it smells a little bit like petrol, which means that somehow petrol has got into the oil. So um, I'm going to have to drain some of that off. Right, let's dip in. I took half a litre out, so hopefully I've taken way too much out, so then I can at least top it up. Wow, it's spot on. It was half a litre too much.
let's start it up, shall we? Okay, there's no ignition light come on and nothing on the starter. Ah, there's a cable that's come off. Ooh. Take two. Okay, if you remember, I emptied the carburetors out so there's nothing in the float bowl. So what I'm gonna do is just spray a little bit of brake cleaner inside the air filters. Hopefully that will be enough to get it started and then it will pump the fuel through. Fingers crossed. Okay, it's hard to say if it's been successful, but at least it started up. I'm going to take it for a test drive, uh, just up the road and back, nowhere too far, and then let's check again. So I've only literally just gone up the road and um, it's dry um, and last time I took it this far it was leaking quite badly so I'm not going to count my chickens yet but um, I'm going to go up the road turn back and then we'll have a proper look back at the workshop. Okay I am back. Um, I don't know if you heard but when I accelerated a bit harder it was popping and banging and um, what I didn't say on the camera is I actually adjusted the carburetor a little bit to allow uh, more fuel into it so I think it's over fueling now so I'm going to back them off and I put some cardboard underneath and I'm going to go and have a coffee and then see if there's any drips on the cardboard also check out the new tyres on the back I think it looks loads better don't you? I think it's wicked um, so how's the leak situation? So I threw this cardboard straight under here um, when I got back and I just had a check underneath. So let's have a look. Yeah, so it's still leaking. So um, 
disappointed, of course, but um, I guess now I have uh, two options. Um, option one is I find a big hill with a lake at the bottom, push it into the lake and then call the insurance company that it's been stolen. Or I'm thinking maybe option two is that I'm going to revert back to the original style oil cooler and change the fan housing and at that time I'll paint everything. But I think for this summer I'm just going to drive it a little bit while it's leaking and just top it up because I'm a bit fed up with this to be honest. I would really love for um, you people out there if you have any idea um, what would solve this problem, what I'm doing wrong or whatever i would love to hear from you and i would love your help because this is quite annoying now this is the second time that i've taken the engine out for this problem and put it back in again and um, i don't want to keep doing it obviously okay it's actually about a week or maybe a little bit more later um, after the oil was still leaking i put the car outside and i haven't driven it since but i've been talking to people it's not something i like to do too often but sometimes it's essential and what those people suggested is that maybe the pressure relief valve um, is maybe stuck and there is too much pressure being pumped into the oil cooler and therefore leaking out of the seals. So what I am going to do to investigate, I'm going to remove this oil pressure warning light sensor from here and I'm going to replace that with a gauge to tell me how much oil pressure is in the engine. And once I get a reading from that, I am going to remove one of the pressure release valves. Um, there's actually two on this engine. This is a later case. And one regulates the pressure and then the other one is for if there is too much oil built up it like relieves the pressure and it opens up so the one nearest the oil pump is the one that suspected that it might be sticking or stuck i don't know i don't know if this is a problem but i need to uh, investigate further this is the oil pressure switch that i've just removed and in place i have put this gauge Okay, as you saw in that video, it, um, at idle, this is cold start, so at idle it was around 3 bar, um, which is about 42 psi, and when I revved it up, it went up to nearly 4 bar, which is nearly 60 psi, so I think um, that is too high, and I'm going to now check in the manual uh, to what it should be around. I had a look online, and they suggest with this size engine and a slightly um, upgraded pump you should have about 30 psi at idle and for every thousand rpm you gain 10 psi so what happens is is when you start from cold the oil is thicker when it's cold and once it warms up it flows better it's a lot thinner so the pressure will come down and you can adjust this by using different weights of oil because they come in different thicknesses obviously for different engines and applications. What I'll do is I'm going to remove the spring from the oil pressure valve and replace just have the piston in there and I'll start it up again and see if the pressure is any different to um, what it was just now. Okay this is a later 1600 case that I'm using in my 64 and the relief valve spring that I'm going to remove is the one nearest the oil pump which is on this side on the left hand side of the engine and if we go underneath, I don't know if you can see in this light, but this like big screw uh, bolt thing, that's the pressure relief valve in there. And basically all it is, is a little tiny piston that uh, has a spring on it and it regulates uh, the pressure. Okay, so I just ground a chisel, um, so made it into like a big screwdriver and used the spanner on it to remove this spring so there's your spring that controls the pressure um, i believe i bought maybe a higher performance one so this could be the problem 
So now with that removed, I'm going to start it up again and we'll check the pressure, see if it's any different. Okay, as you can see, removing that spring made absolutely no difference. Um, I also double checked that the valve, um, sorry, the piston moved freely and it wasn't stuck or anything and it was fine. Um, so just for fun, because that's what I'm all about, I'm gonna remove the other one, remove the spring and see if that makes any difference and also check if that one is stuck. Okay, so you can see in the front uh, relief valve, um, which is a overpressure um, relief valve. Um, this is a shorter spring. Um, but as you can see, it, um, the idle was a lot lower, which we would expect with the pressure drop. And as it revved up, it kind of went about the same as it was. Okay there people, so I've just been texting with my friend Yanni and um, he asked me which pump I'm running on this thing and basically the long story short is I had a 1641 engine in my 54 Oval which is back in England and I brought that engine here to put in this car because when I bought this car it came without an engine. I opened the engine up, it was in terrible condition so I ended up rebuilding that engine but actually the only components that I was able to use from that was the cam and the oil pump which is in this. Everything else was trash, even the case on this is different. So um, I showed him a picture of the pump that I have in this and he said that it's way too big for what, I, what type of engine I have. So we're probably, well we know that we're running too high a pressure from the readings on the gauge which means I, my next approach, I'm going to change the oil pump for a smaller one. He suggested 21 millimeter and I believe he thinks that this is a 32 millimeter, which is for higher power engines like two liters or if you're running an external oil cooler and you have more uh, path for the oil to pump around. So I think we're on the right track to getting this oil leak fixed, but we'll see. Please uh, leave me a comment if you have a different opinion or if you have any other solutions or ideas to a solution for this problem that I have. Um, would be great to hear from you. Also, please, if you enjoy these videos, click the like button. Please subscribe. It's for free and you can always change your mind. And I'll be, I will be back with another video shortly. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. See ya.